This is Eric from Tuttle. Today, I want to talk about authentication using Superbase. So we've had a few requests on our Discord regarding authentication with Superbase, and especially on reset and updating passwords. That's proven a little bit difficult. So I want to take you through a couple of examples um, in a small demo project I built. So I'm taking you through sign up, login, reset, and update. And you can sort of divide these four types of uh, requests into two categories. One for unauthenticated requests, which means that anyone uh, should be able to perform these operations. So that would be sign up, login, and reset. And then once you're authenticated, uh, you should also be able to update your password. So um, I have my demo page here and First, we can start with the sign up. <clears throat> so I'll create my account here. Um, and the request will go to uh, my Superbase URL with this um, path postfix. So my Superbase URL, I'll find that on my um, Superbase page here. Uh, where you can see your project URL, but you can also find your public key. And that one has to be provided as a header called API key. And finally, the body is just the email and the password. So I'll send that. And I should receive an email. Yeah, I think I got it here. So if we paste that in here, um, I'm now, I've sort of uh, verified my account and it just redirects me to the, to the front page. So that's the sign up. Um, <clears throat> you can see I still have, I don't have any cookies, so I'm not logged in at this point. If we move over to login, um, I'll just type in here. So this one has an endpoint called auth v1 token and then the grant type is password that's because i'm using the password authentication method you can find some of the other uh, providers in here um, so this is the one i'm using email but superbase supports a ton of different um, auth providers again the api key has to be in the header and the body is the same as before and then once we get the response back we we grab the access token from the response and we um, set a, an access token cookie um, using a total action. <clears throat> so let's try and see if this works. So I'll submit it. It says I was successfully logged in. And now you see that I have an access token that I would be able to use for future requests against my Superbase instance. But for now, let's just delete all my cookies again and go back because now we want to reset. So this is in case I forgot my password. We will call the Superbase endpoint called auth v1 recover. And you can then pass a redirect to, which will take the user to the URL that you specify. In my case, it will take me to the update page that we'll see in a bit. So I'll just type this in. The body is just the email and you still need the API key as a header. I'll submit this. And it says it was reset. Um, let me check my email here. Yeah, I got something. So again, this is a super base URL, but it will redirect me to um, this page slash update. And you can see that now I actually have an access token. Um, the way I set the access token was by um, checking for the access token hash parameter up here in the URL. Now the um, hash parameter is only available client side, not server side. Therefore we have to grab it from uh, the front end and then use that information to actually set the um, access uh, token cookie using the total action. Um, and since I'm now authenticated, I should be able to update my password, at least if my browser works. There we are. Um, 
I submit this. It says my password was successfully updated. Um, so those were the four types of um, operations that I want to show you. Um, and now I'll just quickly go through the total project so you can see how I set this up. Yeah, so if we start by sign up, um, the API is pretty simple. Just email and password that we're sending, no authorization, just the API key, and then um, you get the email, that's it. Uh, so I just type these email and uh, password inputs up to variables. For the login page, it's more or less the same, but once the API request is successful, down here, I'll make sure to set a session cookie based on the access token that I got back from the login request. So it's login data, and then I get the access token there. If we move over to the reset page, uh, it just takes the, the email. And again, there is no authorization, just the API key. Um, and the body is just the email. And then I have to provide the redirect to as a query parameter here. For the update, I chose to use this lifecycle method on load. So <clears throat> first I check if uh, if I do have an, um, a hash parameter. So to do that, I had to introduce a new variable, or sorry, a new uh, formula in total called current URL. So this will just grab the full URL from your page. I pass that and I get the hash. And if the size of that hash is greater than zero, well then uh, I know that there's a hash parameter. And then I'll set the session cookie. The session cookie I'm getting from the URL, uh, from the hash. And then I actually need to split it because the, um, the hash had a, a, an equal sign in it. And I had to, to get the first element, or the, well, the second part of it, uh, index one. And then it also had some additional parameters like uh, time to live um, at the end of it. So I'm also splitting on that and taking the first part. So a little bit of gymnastics there. Um, but this will then set the session cookie as soon as this page loads. So once you hit the submit button for your updated password, you should be able to update your password. I'll make sure to share this project um, on, on Discord. And if you have any questions, um, or uh, improvements, let me know. Thank you so much for watching.